Hello and welcome back to Arma 3 Classroom. Today we're going to we're going to take it back. My last video was over JTAX and uh that really did well, so I kind of want to backtrack a little bit and uh throw some basic information out there because there's a lot of people out there that are looking to buy this game and don't really know what all to have now. I'm going to go through some basic loadouts for riflemen and what the role of a rifleman is. Now some of you veterans out there and all you intelligent people out there already know, you know, a rifleman's a boot on the ground basically. He's the one to take care of business. Orma 3 is a whole different ball game, kind of. It's pretty much the same, but um, just give that out there and I'm gonna I'm gonna do an entire series. I'm gonna expand on this because that my last video with JTAX just exploded. I was completely impressed. Um, for all those new subscribers out there, you know, I love it, um, getting started out, I love getting, getting views, I love getting likes, I love the comments, um, you know, keep it up, um, and got, getting everything situated in my, my real life, so now I'm back and ready to jump right into it, so, right now, I'm in the virtual arsenal, which is where this, most of these classrooms are going to take place, because I'm not trying to do anything specific um, kind of like I was in JTAC. JTAC I was in the field I was giving you practical exercises going through the one twos. Well riflemen basically want to go over kit, roles, and a little bit of uh, my own twist onto stuff. Um, right now I'm actually in one of my pilots. Virtual Arsenal is great. Um, I recommend everybody who gets, gets this game and starts out get in the arsenal get your gear, load it out how you want it, save it, and it'll be everywhere. Do, and all for, for all you veterans, do a vanilla and your mod pack. Two separate ones. That way, somebody needs some help, you can switch over to a vanilla. It makes it so much easier. But right now, let me load a... I'm going to load my light template. And let me hide this so you can see them. So basically, it's all personal preference. I like multicam. I was former army, um, former being the key word in that. But uh, I still enjoy my duty time, and I love the camouflage. I love the the surroundings around it. So the heavy really shows it. It has the the arm pads in it. But really, what comes down to kits is what will help you in a mission. Um, me and my group went mission after mission after mission after mission and we constantly kept running out of something something we we would run out of ammunition hand grenades lights smoke whatever um, or we would run out of a specific type so really let's let's jump into uh, into the nitty-gritty so my template does not have a rifle it does not have a launcher it does have a pistol however my standard stock pistol that I personally like is the 45 ACP Tech C2. I like it because it's powerful. Um, it has a lot of good module mods that you can put on it. Like, uh, we'll go over here. You can put a silencer on it, and that's pretty much it. You know, it's not like the uh, 45 45 caliber where you could put a sight on it. You know, I, I I'm a firm believer that sights on a pistol are worthless. Some people like that. They think it's kind of cool. Me, not so much. Um, then we're going to jump down right now to camouflage. Now, whenever you're doing this in Arsenal, you can you can pick any camouflage. I use MTP for my stock. Um, it's multi-cam. It's vanilla. It's easier if I want to go play on this server. Anybody's server, even if they have mods on, as long as I have the basic mods to run it, I can pick this template and I can go with it because my, my stuff's everywhere. So I normally go with combat fatigues, MTP. You could be anything. If you want to be an AAF person, go do it. But I do this even if I'm an officer, a sergeant, a boot, JTAC. Normally this is my my uh, my camouflage that I use. My vest, since this is a heavy rig, it's the carrier special. Um, I did buy the mod packs, and so I got all that. So, But you don't have to. There's a lot of great ones. There's a lot of great chest rigs harnesses for everything that you need to do and for every color. 
I got this one because if you look down here, it has pretty much the highest armor. You can load the most. It is heavy though, so you really have to watch out what your weight is because you get severely fatigued um, now. So, But I did it because of the armor and the loadout, not so much the weight, even though I wish the weight was a little bit less, but you know, you can't be, beggars can't be choosers. As for backpacks, they their MTP looks terrible, as you can see. I mean, it's white, it has white, and where the white should be right here is tan. So I really don't like it, so I just go with the khaki. Why I go with the, the, uh, the carry-all backpack is, of course, it has low armor. It can load a lot. I think it's one of the highest ones, if not the highest capacity backpack in the game. I may be wrong, but this is the one that I love the most. Because I can pack everything I want in it and more. Um, and its weight is relatively low. So that's that's really, really concerning on a backpack. And that's my stock jacket, vest, and, or uniform vest and backpack. Now we can get into the little customizations like the helmet. You pick your helmet. I normally pick mine with all the gear on it. Because there are some mods that uh, your strobe does light up. So, and I, and me personally, I like the little flashlight. I really wish it worked. And a camera. So this, this pretty much resembled the one that I had in the army. So, um, I really like that, that ACH. Um, vanilla, I like the baklava with the goggles. I love goggles. Any of my friends will tell you I always put goggles on. I always have my goggles on my helmet. Goggles are a lifesaver. I hate those ballistic glasses if I can get away from them. So this is pretty much just a reflection of me. Um, night vision, black, brown, green really doesn't matter. Since black really wouldn't wouldn't go with this, and green really wouldn't go with this, I went with with brown. So um, basic loadout for me. Binoculars are completely worthless. Um, I understand if it's an immersion. Yeah, laser designators. Eh. If you're not a JTAC, you really don't need one. Um, but we're talking about a basic rifleman, so range finders are nice. Um, I could definitely see riflemen having range finders because you need to call out things over the radio to your person. Hey, I got a guy 200 meters out. I got a tank 400 meters out. You know, bearing this, bearing that, and that range finder really does everything. Now, is it realistic? Probably not. I know me as a rifleman, I didn't have range finders. I had to guess. So, I didn't even have binoculars. So, go figure. Um, then you have the basics. You have maps, GPS. You could pick UVAV terminals, but I normally just pick GPS. It's so much easier. Stock on radio, compass, watch, and the rest of it's pretty much personal Standing preference. Um, so, let's go back up here to what is in my uniform as a rifleman. And these aren't just in riflemen. I have this basic loadout as a template for everything that I have. This is the stock stuff that I have in my uniform. So this is talking about just the uniform, not the vest, not the backpack. Oh, where'd you go? We go to the grenades here and we'll scroll down. And you can see that I have one blue smoke. I have two green chem lights, two yellows, two blues, and two IRs. Now why do I have one blue smoke? Well, traditionally what I normally use smoke for, blue smoke for especially, is medevacs. Medical areas, medical markers, um, anything like that. So that is really important to me, to be able, if my buddy's hurt and I need to get him off the battlefield, I need to pop smoke. Blue's normally my color, purple's my alternate, um, but I could put that in there and that's really close, dear to my heart, so that's why I have it on on the uh, the uniform. Chem lights, um, the reason I came up with two two green, two yellow, and two red, or two blue, is blue at night, you pop a chem light, a, a smoke grenade, you run over to it whenever it goes, throw a blue chem light on it, it illuminates it for night operations. Yellow, I mean, chem lights are really the exact same. If I'm a pathfinder, go on yellow smoke. I'll pop yellow smoke, 
I'll pop a chem light out there right on top of it. It illuminates it. The guys up in the air can see it. They jump out. Boom. It's very easy at night. And two IRs. Now, the you have to be careful with the IR grenades. I don't know if it's deliberate. I don't know if it's a bug or it's just how it happens. But if you pop one of these and there's AI in the gunner seats or in airplanes, they will shoot it, even if it's your own guys. Um, I found out that the hard way. I popped one of these literally maybe 10 meters ahead of me and an A-10 just scraped everything around it and I was like whoa what the heck you know so but that's why I have those I don't have red I don't have red because normally I go green for for friendly positions and then I go yellow for enemy direction because at night I don't really know exactly where they are so um, something and I'll get into this in my aviation deal or my avi my aviation videos is normally I will pop a green chem light maybe 10 meters ahead of where we are and then look way up and throw a yellow one so it goes out further so that the pilot knows okay I need to connect the dots the green ones here the yellow ones here draw a line to it okay from this green one to the yellow one the enemies in that direction from them and then they shoot it towards that way. So that's that's my basic uniform. And as you can see, it's completely full. So this is my stock uniform for everything for my gear. I also have one med kit. Now you're probably asking, well yeah, that's an obvious. You should always have one med kit. Mine is different. I have them in all three layers. And I'll get into that towards the end. So now let's go to the vest. Now, like I said, I have a pistol. It's stock on all my templates and everything. The only thing I miss is, is the rocket launcher and the main weapon, the primary. In my vest, I carry two mags, two pistol mags. That's it. As you can see, my loadout stock doesn't leave me a lot of room for primary weapon ammunition. So that's why I only have two. I wanted to get, you know, I like stuff being in my vest as well. Um, I also have a stock two hand grenades, two white smoke, two yellow smoke, and two orange smoke. Now there's no no rhyme or reason or pattern. I just like twos because that gives me an all around, um, you know, somebody needs a marker, I can sit there and change it up and throw orange smoke if it's PVP session, and they'll be like, all right, I see orange smoke. Yep, that's me. Um, and then uh, if the enemy happens to overhear that, the next time they ask for a smoke marker, the enemy pops orange smoke, and I pop green smoke, then or, you know, white smoke, they go, oh, whoa, um, we got two smokes. Is yours orange? Negative. And then they can automatically, that's a pinpoint for them. They can go, okay, we need artillery strike on them, kill anybody or anything right there and then they'll confirm white smoke and then you go Roger confirm on on white you know so it does help I don't have any chem lights or any IR grenades on my vest I also don't have any mines or anything like that I normally don't carry mines or anything but I do have one first aid kit as well now for the grenades, it's personal preference. I like RGOs. Some people like RGNs because they're lighter, or because of their own personal preference. Whatever they are, whatever they have. This is the way I like to do it, um, and it does give you. You could probably fit about two or three mags of uh, primary weapon, depending, depending on what weapon. So, like, this is. I, I don't say this is my rifle template. I will grab this heavy template and then I can put a machine gun on it. So this makes it a machine gunner. You know, that's that's kind of how I have my template set up. As for the backpack, I have four mags, so that's a total of six mags for my pistol. Normally I carried five, but I always seem to run out. So one extra mag might be the difference, and I've noticed that seven is too much. Five it happens to be too too less. Six or and six is pretty much that sweet spot. I mean, it's it's your own personal preference. What kind of missions you do? I like to have secondary ammunition because sometimes my primary does run out. I need to switch to it, and sometimes that's the only thing I have for a while. So that's why I have six total mags. 
I have five total hand grenades, three in my backpack, two in my vest, because of the same reason. If I have four or three, I end up running out of them. Um, sometimes you'll throw them and it catches the top of a building and drops right in front of you. You got to bug out. Then you got to go back, throw the hand, and throw another grenade. So that gives you room for error. I also filled in. Notice that I don't have white, yellow, orange, or blue smoke, but in my backpack I do carry two two of every remaining smokes. Now, the way I classified my smoke is white is marker, mainly just a marker, or it's just to do what it's supposed to do, cover, conceal, whatever it's supposed to do, you know, do that. Yellow, every one of these are a marker, but yellow is, is more for like civilians. You know, there's civilians here, stop shooting, you know, you're normally signaling, signaling somebody up in the air, or signaling somebody far away, you know, stop, these are civilians here. Or it is a marker. Red is not enemy, it's enemy direction, and that, the only way that that works is in coordination with green. So if I pop green smoke, you know, right on, right at my feet, and then I chuck red right out where the enemy is, somebody can sit there and say, well, okay, I see red, but behind it is green, you know, and try to sit there and do the mathematics. Well, if I'm seeing red and then green's behind it, that means the enemy's between them and me, you know, or up in the air, same difference. Um, green is friendly. Purple is secondary medical primary is marker blue is only medical only medical and then orange is secondary enemy and then primary marker so if you run out of red smokes hey I'm switching up boom orange same difference notice that I don't have any IRs chem lights anything like that I don't carry any grenade or any any explosives, mines, claymores, anything like that. If I had to pick, I would probably carry a claymore. I would probably carry an explosive charge. I wouldn't carry anything else because it's just too much nonsense for the bundle. And I carry a first aid kit. Now, why do you, you're probably asking, why do you have three first aid kits? I get shot a lot. A lot more than what you guys see on my videos. A lot more than a lot of people see. I got... I was playing with a couple guys um, the other day, and there was a BD, or BTR, I believe, and I happened to be too high, and one of its rounds actually went into my guy's shoulder. I mean, I survived. I was able to get back and, and get medical assistance, but, I mean, I get shot a lot. <laughs> so three med kits, one on, you know, and that's that's just common sense. If you're in real life, and you're going hiking, and you have, you know, your 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 clothes and your backpack. Have a med, have two med kits, one in your pocket, one in your backpack. That way, if you come across somebody who's hurt, boom, you got a med kit. Same difference in game. You know, one of my buddies is hurt, give him a med kit. Another one of my buddies gets hit, give him a med kit. I get hurt, I have a med kit. Now I'm out of med kits or first aid kits. So that's the basic loadout of my rifleman um or or all of my all of my templates and that goes for pretty much all of these now i i did make an empty man which is literally an empty man he, he literally has nothing this is what i base most of my templates off of but i do have heavy light and the difference is, is the vests you know this is my heavy which would be my support gunners uh my rifleman my my close quarters. This is more my my need to get into oh, well, I guess ah. As you can see the the packs have changed. Everything the loadout has changed in the armor. So, the armor's changed just a little bit, not much. Um really can't tell hardly. But you can tell on this picture. Um but and then I have a heli pilot, which a lot of people tell me, well, you're wearing the wrong mask, you're wearing the crew. I like this one because 
I don't like people to see my face. I really like this helmet. I think it's a good helmet. Um, you know, it has the oxygen mask and everything. It's basically the same thing, same template. So uh, the only different one would be this. This would be my pilot, my actual fixed wing pilot, not my helicopter pilot. But it's, it has all the same equipment, all the same stuff. If you go through here, you know, you do have the only difference on this one, however, and I forgot about it, and on my helicopter, is normally I have two two blue smokes. One, if I crash, I can pop it on the crash. Or I can pop it where I need it, need somebody to be where it's medical medical wise. That's the only difference, and I don't have the two middles. You have to customize it the way that you want it. Backpacks you really had to crunch it down because as a pilot you have the ejection seat whereas the helicopter your pilots normally don't unless they fixed it lately I really haven't looked too much into it um, but last I know no, last I've known is the uh, the helicopter pilots cannot eject which kinda sucks um, I don't really think they should be able to eject but bail out would be definitely a uh, something that needs to be put in but your backpack is taken by a uh, parachute so you can't really can't load anything into it as far as I know excuse me got the little hiccups going on there um, private security uh, normally if you're doing Merc type missions I, I just made these for kind of different missions but they all have kind of the same ones police if I'm looking for uh, looking into you know city life or something like that um, and then sniper this one I do keep my weapon on this and my my pilot because I normally don't change them um, they're ready to go I can just leave and go do whatever I need to do so let's jump right in right now to the infantry so or to the rifleman infantry I'm sorry about that the rifleman so the rifleman is the key ingredient to any military unit normally a squad is made up of anywhere from 5 to 15 people um, you can go way out but that's you know 30 people to a squad you're looking at you're looking at a platoon of roughly about 120 ish maybe <laughs> give or take so that's not realistic that's more like a company size so a platoon is normally about 40 50 people um, so for the sake of it four squads of 10 40 people plus platoon sergeant platoon leader each squad is split up into a five-man group one group one one group is uh, alpha one group is bravo has team leaders the riflemen normally make up of half of a team so you would normally have a machine gunner or auto rifleman you would have a grenadier and you would have two riflemen so the riflemen really make up a lot in whenever you're looking into a team and picking the right loadout for your riflemen is by far the most important um, and it all is based on what you're trying to do. If you're in close quarters, you could get away with a, pretty much any weapon except for a really, really extreme long-range weapon like a sniper rifle. Don't recommend anything like this. Um, single shot, very slow reloads. Um, you know, it, it's very difficult to get get those weapons up and ready. Um, I haven't tried really a lot of the new weapons but any assault rifle in an urban environment is very good especially if you can find one that's 762 the new one that they came out with um, that I know for sure is these that are 762 um, I really like them I really like the look of them I haven't really played with them a lot I played with the MK14 um, I really like it it has the fully automatic and semi so it's really good for for those designated marksmen but if you're going straight from nothing you you bought or downloaded you're really stuck with the MX series which is 6.5 which is one 
one step above 556, five, which in my my view in the game is no different than a 556. Five, I think I've killed somebody in maybe five or six shots on a good day at maybe a hundred meters away, a little bit further than that, with a 5.56 five, and five shots the same distance with a 6.5. The only difference I've seen is 7.62 or 9.3s. Um, anything bigger than than a 5.56, five, 6.5. Five, six, 6. So really knowing what you're trying to do um, is going to help. So let's just try this MXM. And next is the scope. Now, a lot of people use these because they say the rest of them are just overpowered. Um, you know, it's not realistic. I've In the Army, I've never seen this crap, ever. Um, I've never seen these ACO red dot sights um, on any gun, ever. Unless it was something that they were trying out or trying to do. Um, I have seen some of these heavier sights and the hybrids that do have the little red dot on top of the scope. I have seen those, but me personally, I'm just old school. I like the RCO. Um, it's kind of like the ACOG. Or if I really have to, the MK7 or 17 Halo sight, I like that one. Um, really, any of the other ones, if you're using a designated rifleman. Uh, designated marksman scope. That's more for like urban environments. You're you're the guy that's kind of given Overwatch most of the time. So really pick, sit there, pick your scope, test them out, um, and, and pick which one you like. Pick which one is really going to help you. Um, so me being RCO, RCO is really good. It has the ha it has the hybrid sight, so you do have the red dot on top. Um, it gives you decent zoom. So if you're building to building. Or building to open field you can actually actually go and, and look laser flashlight I prefer laser flashlight have no use for it it stops literally probably a half a block from illuminating anything and if you're in the middle of the woods you don't need to illuminate anything anyway because you have night vision it's the great thing about the future everybody has night vision so lasers are a must you can't see them in the day you can't see them without your night vision on so it's really towards night operations, but even during the daytime, I carry a laser sight because you never know. You might be playing, it'd be 6 in the evening, 5 in the evening in game. You run into the night, you don't know. Suppressor, no suppressor, really up to you. You can make room. Um, you know, you could just take, uh, take the suppressor, take it off, put it in your vest, carry it around. If you need to put it on, you have it. It's, that's really personal preference. And I'll demonstrate that here in, here in just a little bit. Bipod, these are totally new. Um, you have to buy them, but if you are to buy them or you download a mod to have them, I would definitely say bipod. Definitely, 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 definitely say bipod. Um, for, for a rifleman, you know, this would be pretty much my stock setup. Now, a lot of people are going to sit there and critique me. Well, not all riflemen have silencers. I know this, but we are not in the real world. We're taking real, real world, world applications of equipment, putting them here in a game, and saying, "Okay, well, I don't know what situation I might get in. I might need this. You know, my pistol has a silencer on it. Normally stock. I don't like my pistols not having a silencer, because if you need to take out somebody quietly, you have that option. That gives you an option. You know. So uh, let's go ahead and try this and, and walk through a couple little little things." Um, like I said, you can spawn in, you can make one with the silencer, all you do is hit your gear button, it comes up, you take your silencer, and you put it in your vest. Now silencer's gone, you have this, this option to have, you know, go loud, go silent, but you do have that option. Um, as a rifleman, you're kind of limited to what you can do, um, in a, in a, in a sense of suppressive yet accurate fire. Um, if you want to think of it, uh, a machine gunner is more of uh, fully auto. I'm just going to spray and pray, whereas a rifleman should be more consistent. If there's a guy back there, you know, you're, you're consistent instead of just spraying and praying. Um, 
you know, and let's go over here and look at some of these guys and, and just check out their vest and backpack setup. That's why I love this. Um, you know, they're, 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 their silhouette's not that big, especially from the front. Um, it's wide, but it is it is concealed from the side. It's a little bit long wise or wide, I guess, from this area. Um, but it does give you a decent a decent silhouette. It does help you get down on the ground, move. Um, your backpack does stick up way too much from what I like, but you know, you, you can't have everything. Um, I mean, I just, I really like how this rifleman sets up. So, as a rifleman, really, what what are you supposed to do? Well, you're, you're just there to support. I mean, you're, you're there to, to carry out the dirty work. Um, it's, a, it's really an entry-level position. Anybody can be a rifleman. It's not hard. You know, point, shoot, bad guys, that's it. Um, you know, you can't go very fast in this. Of course, I'm not loaded out completely. But notice my fatigue, you know, I can go 18 miles or kilometers per hour. But my fatigue is just skyrocketing. And I'm only at 63% full. You know, I'm, this is ridiculous how fast that goes up. But um, the game mechanics, if you lay down whenever you're trying to rest, it goes down tremendously. So that is something to actually get in here and test your loadouts. Is this going to be good for you? Is this going to be bad? Um, you know, these little squares, this is a meter. So, you know, you can sit here and Zeus in something 100, 200, 300 meters out and have something right here where is your starting line and you just run see how far you get. You know, maybe you want to run 300 meters with all your equipment on and not have any issues. That's up to you. You can do that. Zeus lets you do that. Virtual Arsenal lets you do that, and all you got to do is hit escape, go back to Arsenal, and you can sit there and switch around all your stuff. You can also do vehicles in here. Not going over that right now, but that is an option. So a rifleman, what what tips and tricks could I give a rifleman? Really, this is for all all you that are watching this. If you want to get Arma 3, you want to get in the Arma series, you've seen tons of videos, you're a big fan, you haven't quite got into it, Rifleman is what I recommend. Rifleman is the easiest job, it's not complicated, and your skills will be used in every other position. The skills you learn as a Rifleman are, are easier because as a Grenadier you have to judge. Okay, This guy's... 400 meters out, my little, my, my tube, noob tube, whatever you want to call it, grenade launcher, it only shoots out to, you know, the little sight only goes out to 100 meters, 200 meters. This guy's 300 meters. So you have to kind of have that, you know, judgment. And that's, that's all about skill, or all about skill, all about learning. Excuse me. I, uh, I also don't recommend if you're starting out, to do auto riflemen. It's just man, it's just a bad bad one to start with because it's it's so hard to control the weapon. Um especially if you're in a firefight. Oh, excuse me, I had to take a drink. Um especially if you're in a firefight and you're brand new, you have the tendency like every other game like Call of Duty to just mash down the trigger and just hold it. Um the thing about this is this is not Call of Duty, ladies and gentlemen. There's not a news report out there. CNN needs to do a, this, do a report. This is not Call of Duty. This is not Battlefield, you know, where you can just go pick up somebody's gear off the ground and it's automatically going to work, even if he's got an AK and you got an M4. Ain't going to work. Your ammunition is not the same. Yeah, you can go pick stuff off the, up off the ground, but in this game you're going to have to pick up the weapon too um, unless you're shooting your own guys or you have one of their weapons for some reason but auto rifleman it's just it's just hard um, hard to get that 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 fine tweaking out and it's based on weapons you know on this MK200 I do roughly about 3 seconds 
Um, in my head, I normally say, die mother F. Die mother F. If you say that really fast, that's about three seconds. Um, and then if I, if I want to go five seconds, you know, I say that in my head. You can count. You can come up with a saying. In the Army, that's what I learned. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but this is that's reality. Um, come up with a saying, you know, Jim Bob Dill. There's about two seconds, three seconds. You know, you, where you, you push down the trigger, you say your saying, you let off the trigger. And normally it keeps a pretty nice pattern, keeps a pretty nice grouping. However, these new weapons, not so much. Um, let me see if I can't find one. I think they're at the bottom, which makes no sense. Yeah. These ones, I've figured out that three seconds is not enough, but if you do five seconds, your gun is just erate, and you know, you're, you're not even shooting near the, near the target. The counterbalance to this is the, the, uh, the resting system they have, the tripod system they have, the bipod system they have, um, you know, that, that does help. You can actually lock the machine gun into place where you just pivot it, which isn't, re isn't real, but, I mean, it does support. I've never shot a machine gun. All the machine guns I've shot in my life, ones with bipods, 249, 240. Even with the bipod out, that thing still do likes to jump. Um, but it does help if you're... It, because in reality, you're not going to shoot standing up. Um, you know, you're not you're not going to shoot it. You shouldn't shoot any of these weapons standing up, not in real life or not in 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 game. You know, um, what we call what I call or what I was taught. Now, some guys are going to get on here and be like, "Well, I could shoot it standing up. Good for you." I bet if you put dump 30 rounds down range and dump another 30 rounds down range, dump another 30 rounds down range, without letting your hands, without letting that weapon drop, your arms are going to get pretty freaking tired and your your accuracy is going to go shit after about the third mag. Whereas if I take a kneeling position or a laying position, not only am I reducing my silhouette, I'm using potential cover in front of me, either defilade that I can't really see something like that but I'm also resting my weapon and stamina I would rather have stamina than you know gung-ho all that bull crap you see on Hollywood in this game since we're talking about this game AI is brutal it's freaking brutal you have roughly about three shots is what I count before the next one is going to hit you and if you have it on hard difficulty you have maybe one shot so, you know, and normally it's a kill shot. <laughs> so definitely, 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 whenever you're getting in this game, learn. Whenever you take contact, whenever you see somebody, you crouch. You lay down. You get down as low as you can because hopefully, you know, there could be a root or a small defilade. You could be going over the top of a hill and see them, and you're, you, whenever you're laid down, you're just in enough defilade that they can't hit you. So your, your survivability will go longer. It also stabilizes your shots. It makes it so much easier. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's so much easier than just sitting here going bang, 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 to, oh, God, I'm taking contact. Now, see, if, if, if I'm standing up and, yeah, there's that crap deployed, which makes no sense. If I'm if I'm standing up, yeah, you really can't see a lot. You can see my head, you can see my stuff like that. But compared to here, I mean, I can still peek out. You know, I'm still covered. Most of 99% of my body is covered, except for the maybe the 5% of my head sticking out whenever I lean left, right. Um, whenever I'm laying down, almost 100% of my body is covered. But the great thing about this game is you can actually, if I can. Ahead, finish your reload. All right. Now that he's done doing that, you can actually lay down and do weird things.
there we go. Yeah, you can actually lay down. So, in a sense, yeah, you can you can still do that, do the same stuff that you can kneeling. But when you're standing, you're standing. There's that's that's it. You're freaking standing. There's nothing you can do about it. You know. Um, so I definitely recommend riflemen as your start out. If you're coming to this game, don't go putting yourself down, well, I want to be a pilot. I want to be this. I want to be that. In due time, my young grasshoppers, in due time, you will be there. You will beat this game. I promise you. But everyone's got to start out somewhere, and this is probably the easiest job, especially if you're going into a community. Um, they're probably going to put you through some kind of basic training. What does WASD do? What does QNE do? What does the grenade throw button how do you search your gear? You know, basic training kind of crap. It's nothing like like the real thing. But, I mean, any veteran figures out that there's going to be those communities out there that is, is really hardcore milsim. And that that's good and all, but you... Hmm. I don't know, sometimes, sometimes it gets me wondering why they have basic training whenever they're just going to teach you infantry school afterwards no matter what your job is. Um, you know... So, not getting on the on the community deal, but as a, as an infantryman, there's there's these keys that you need to do, and there's five. Key one is get a loadout that you're comfortable with. Play the story mode on easy, regular, medium, hard, expert, freaking Zeus be God difficulty, where every three steps you take, five lightning bolts hit right there. You know, whatever difficulty you want it on, do it whenever you get it. Get into the arsenal, play with the weapons. If you have if you have the downloadable content, that's just more tools for the tool shit. If you don't, don't get discouraged. Don't think, oh well I gotta buy all this stuff. No you don't. The difference between the weapons are literally the caliber. You can do the same. You can kill somebody with a 9mm submachine gun just like you can kill somebody with a with a saw or a 50 cal or a uh, Linux. I mean, you can still kill people. It just changes your tactics. Um, number two. Well, number one would be get, you know, get into the game, do the campaign. Number two, get into the editor, find out what weapons you like. Get that loadout, that basic loadout you want, uniforms you want. Make templates. Now, the difference between a loadout and a template is this is a loadout. It has a weapon, has everything that I need on it. I just take it, go. I don't have to put any kind of primary on. This is a template where it's the basic necessities that I need. It's a uniform that I need, but without the primary. So if somebody needs a rifleman, I'm a rifleman. Somebody needs an automatic gunner, I'm an automatic gunner. I could just plug those weapons in there. It's literally five seconds to do it. So getting that is is probably one of the most important things. Number three, get familiar with the ground. Get familiar with the landscape. Altus and Stratus and all is is completely different than Chinaris, than than any of the other ones, especially desert. Desert's literally just a flat piece of sand, and you fight over a little bit of rig. Not much going on there. But I hear a lot of people say, "Oh, well, these tactics work really great. You know, you need to try this. You need to try this." Well, they work good in Chinaris. They don't work good in Stratus. You know because it's little details, it's little things that, that can put you either in a perfect position or in a bad position. Knowing how to identify the, the low parts, things like that, this is all going to help you as an infantryman, as a rifleman. Because finding these low parts in the, in the ground, finding these, these little jewel places where, oh, I can see out, but it's really difficult for them to see. And if you're doing the PvP deal... I mean, these rifle. I mean, it's all key tools. So get familiar. That would be number three. Number four, flexibility. 
don't sit here and go, well, I'm going to use the MK-14, and that is the only weapon I'm going to use forever. Because whenever that MK-14 runs out, and you hit escape, respawn, because I ran out of ammo, you're just doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Be flexible. Now, if you're going into a group, and they're like, we need you as an auto rifleman, congratulations, you're about to have a crash course in rifleman and auto rifleman cl classes. You know, I really, if you're brand new, rifleman's the best thing to do. But you've got to be flexible. You have to be able to to shift. My favorite weapons are 7.62. Sometimes I have to pick up a 5.56. Knowing that I'm going into a village, guys are going to be in buildings that I can't hardly shoot through the wall. You know, whereas 7.62 just goes through the wall and I just wreck anybody who's in there. Um, you know, get flexible with with hand grenades, with, you know, not having them or having grenade launcher grenades instead of hand grenades or having, you know, to deal with, oh, well, I need to mark my location, but yet I need to use a color that's not already out because everybody in my squad just threw every color in the freaking rainbow. You know, how do I put a step that apart? You know, you, you have to be flexible in your equipment. That's why I put the equipment that I have. It's flexible. I can add grenades. I can take away grenades. I can add ammunition. I can take away ammunition. I can take away this. I can add a med kit to my backpack instead of a first aid kit and be a medic. I mean, it's that easy. I'm, I'm flexible with my templates. So, first, get in game. Get the campaign going. Learn the controls. Learn the basic controls. Two, get in the editor or get in the virtual arsenal. Make you a template and find, test the stuff out. Find the stuff that works for you. Okay? Find the stuff that works for you. It's only going to help you. Then, I would say, the, I mean, those are the two biggest things that you need right there. Flexibility and and getting to know your gear and getting to know everything around you and your surroundings and, and learning the game is probably the next one, next two. The last one is always remember to have fun. Riflemen are fun. You shoot shit. That's your fucking job. Sorry for my language. You shoot shit. That's your job. Shoot shit. See something moving? Shoot it. Shoots back? Shoot it again. You know, it, go kick in doors, go throw hand grenades through windows. You know, have fun with it. But a rifleman is is the key to any unit. You have to have a rifleman. You have to have a guy that can shoot a rifle that is not an auto machine gun or a gren grenade. Grenadier, sorry about that. You know, because grenadiers, yeah, counted, they have rifles. This rifle right here is the exact same as this it just has a grenade launcher on it but the loadout is going to be different you're going to have smokes you're going to have flares you're going to have hand grenades you're going to have three round grenades you're going to have all kinds of different you know you're going to have to completely balance these different so you know but you have to have fun that's the biggest thing anyway guys that pretty much wraps up my my gear loadout for the basics and the Rifleman intro. I mean, I really, I think I hit pretty much everything I wanted. Everything that needs to be said. Um, you know, not down in the comments, all you guys, put your thoughts into it. Help rookies out. You know, that's what these videos are for, is, is to get Armor 3 out there. Get communities out there and say, you know what, here. Here is something you need to watch. This will help you. You know, this isn't for any specific group. This is just telling everybody in general you can grab my video feel free you know send it hey I, I want to use your video as training you know send me shoot me something and I'll I'll be happy to to customize it towards your group I'll be happy to do do another video to help your group you know requests anything like that because there are so many different keys to learning things it's ridiculous and some guys are going to watch my video and go I have no clue what he's speaking he's speaking a complete different language and they'd rather have hands on and other guys go okay 
I got the basics of it. I understand what to do. Boom, did it. Goes into a group, and he's 10 steps ahead because he's already figured out what he needs to do. Some guys just run into it, and you get into it by accident. But the key is to have fun doing this. Rifleman's easy. It's fun class. And nine times out of ten, you will never see a auto rifleman or a grenadier with a launcher. Normally, it is the riflemen that have the launcher. And they are called ATAA, or multi-rolled anti-equipment personnel. You know, you can word it however you want the job description. Doesn't make a difference to me. But if you're in a group and you have a grenade launcher or a auto rifle and you have an RPG strapped to your back, you are doing it completely wrong. You're not Rambo. Rambo is not fucking real. That shit's not real. You know, because of the simple fact of weight. You're going to have to carry ammunition for the rocket, ammunition for your gun, and if you're using a belt fed, it's heavy. So you need as much ammunition as you can pack, because you can't pack no 13, 14 mags, you know, boxes of ammunition, 200 round ammunition, on your person. You, you have maybe like 8, I think you can do. So, riflemen, you have the, you are the jack of all trades. You can be anti-air, anti-tank, anti-armor personnel. You can actually be going here and you can be mines. You can do mines. You could be a medic. You could be an engineer. You could be a mine detector. You can do anything as a rifleman. So there are a lot of cool jobs out there that are riflemen. You know, and the only difference between a rifleman and somebody else is really the weapon and the tactics to employ that weapon effectively. Anyway, guys, I hope you loved it. If you do love it, punch the like. Don't forget to freaking leave a comment. If you're a veteran of Arma, real life, you like this video, add to it. There are things I've missed. I am not perfect, ladies and gents. Not perfect at all. I'm putting knowledge out there. So help me by adding more knowledge to it to get these guys in here so we can make our communities bigger, make this game great because it is a fantastic game. It really helps the the community at large whenever we have new blood come in and they're they're fresh and they're ready and they're ripe for the picking. So, you know, punch the like button. Punch the don't like button. Hey, there's no such thing as bad media. No such thing. So you don't like this video hit the don't like button go record your own video send it to me and I will post it underneath of mine and say if you don't like my video this guy made one here you go it's all knowledge so haters gotta hate potatoes gotta potate tomatoes gotta tomate delegators gotta delegate there you have it I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And come back for the next video.